Hello, hello. I'm in a different environment, as you can see. I've got a spinny chair this time either, so less of me rotating around on camera. However, better lighting, because the light is positioned in a better place in this room. And it's a bigger room, too. Where am I now, you may ask? I am home. Home at... yes, my mic is, mic is not muted. But I am home at Gloucester. I always struggle. Should I call it home, really? Because... I'm, home is where the heart is, or so they say. And uh, where is the heart, really? It's home because it's where I live most of the time, so it's a physical location my heart is most of the time. Although, if you go off that definition, maybe my workplace is a very strong contender for where my physical heart is located a lot of the time as well. Uh, so, you know, is my workplace, my office I work in home? Is this my home now? because I've only been living here for four, five months, six maybe, or so, because I had somewhere else before when I was at for about a year. Yeah, exactly a year. So I must, I think I've been here seven months, really? Seven? Maybe six, maybe six, actually. Yeah, no, six months. So I've been here six months. And uh, so is this home? Was my old place I was renting where I'd been for a year? Was that home? I've spent more time there than I have here. Or when I was down in Cornwall, was that my home? Or are they all my home? What is home? It's an interesting thing, really, because for a little log I've been keeping, which is part of some research someone's doing, and so I have to keep a log of what I'm doing for a week, which is what inspired these videos, actually. And uh, I asked for a location, and what I decided to call my location when I was at Cornwall was my family home. And then I alternated in referring to this location between my Gloucester flat or my Gloucester home and in my phone I think I have something like Cornwall home as the name or the, the quick contact details for my home phone at Cornwall or maybe yeah, I think it's Cornwall home or something like that because I felt weird just having it be called home because I don't live there for the majority of the year, so it's not really my home, but in many ways it's a place where I'm most fond of. So yeah, if it's not obvious, I have came down today. Uh, my mum drove me down, I can't actually drive a car, I would take the train, but it had been Christmas, so I had a couple of board games, and hauling that on the train would have been a pain, so she kindly decided to bring me to, Corm uh, to Gloucester again, uh, in exchange, she gets to stay here for free and do some shopping and whatever else she likes to do and fat worry over me as mothers tend to. And that's something that I know someone at my workplace who is very close to retiring and apparently the mothers never stop worrying no matter how old you get. Which I don't know if is a good or a bad thing. Recently he, he earns like a ridiculous amount of money, you know, 70,000 at a guess-ish. 70k pounds a year, so you know that might end up being something like 80 or 90k in dollars. Um, or I, I don't know the exact conversions now because yay Brexit used to know them before then, but then they went to shit and I stopped looking at them because I got depressed. Uh, depressed is a strong word. It wasn't actually depressed. Saddened. Saddened. Uh, so yeah. And he earns a lot of money, and his mum just said, you know, Oh, do you want to be able to loan? Because so, I think he wanted to buy something expensive or whatever. I'm not sure the details wouldn't go into that. And, Because uh, there's always a bit of a weird taboo in England about talking too much about money. It's a weird taboo, but people try not to bring up money too much. I think I'm a bit more candid with that than many other people are. But hey, that's me. I'm, I can be quite talkative about anything, really. Uh, very, very much so. I can talk about very weird things if people want me to. But anyway, uh, so yeah, his mother was, mother was offering him alone. You know, he's a few years away from retiring and earning an absolute fortune. So <laughs> I thought, hmm, guess I'm not getting away from my mother anytime soon, am I? Uh, so there you go, she's fussing over me. Now I'm here. Um, we, it's a bit of a journey from Cornwall to, to Gloucester. Um, it was about three and a half hours on the motorway, so it was a fairly nice drive, we did it on the weekend, so no lorries, and uh, it's not a very busy time of year either, it's not like going in the height of summer, when this three and a half hour journey ends up easily being five hours or six hours or something like that, 
That's why I don't like going to Cornwall in the summer. One of the many reasons I don't like going to Cornwall in the summer, actually. But anyway, uh, so that was basically most of the day. Uh, my the eight-year-old cousin, he finally got Jaraxxus today, Lord Jaraxxus in Hearthstone. He has finally crafted it. I wanted to do that. That's basically the last thing I did before I left. I wanted to help him f win, do some quests, so we can get some packs, so we can get the dust, so we can get Jaraxxus. That was my quest before I left. I, because I didn't have to leave at any explicit time. It's not like I work tomorrow because tomorrow's a Sunday. So I could have sort of left whenever I wanted, really. I didn't have to set train to catch or anything like that. So I could have left when I wanted. So I basically said I to myself at least, I didn't admit this to him, but I am not leaving until he earns Jaraxxus. And thankfully it didn't take too long, because I could make a decent deck. He was fighting really really weak opponents because he himself is usually really bad, so it's fairly easy to blitz through them. Uh, he didn't have amazing cards, but he had good enough cards. And that's all you need really. You can make do with uh, mediocre cards and half stone, as long as you make your deck properly. It's not an exciting deck to play, really, but it won. And got him to Axis, and that's the important bit. So, there you go. That was a uh, highlight. Probably the best thing that happened today, getting that. He was so excited when he got it done. And, uh, yeah, that was a very positive thing. But unfortunately, then that was followed by something fairly negative, which was just before I left, he got very, very stroppy with his mother. And he does this whenever anyone leaves the house that has been staying for a few days. Uh, you know, his uncle, one of his uncles and aunts, um, you know, they, they were both staying, or aunt-in-law was staying for a couple of days, over a few days, been on a couple, like, I think it was like four, three and a half, over Christmas. And uh, when they left, he got a bit stroppy, and he never admits that's the reason. He always finds something else to blame, because he's... I don't know whether that's because he doesn't want to admit it, or he's a kid, so he's not very in tune with his emotions, and that's why. But for whatever reason, uh, he gets very stroppy when people leave. Usually, we really struggle to combat that. However, what I did that I think was relatively effective is... Before I left, you know, he was busy yelling at his mum, and then, uh, you know, I tried to talk to him. He said, no, 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 no. And I just realised as well, I didn't do my intro at the beginning of this video, did I? Oh, well. <laughs> Watch the other videos if you want to see that. But uh, anyway, so he was, you know, saying no, 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 to, to me uh, when I was trying to talk to him. But in the end, I just repeated, hey, I want to talk to you about Hearthstone. Hey, I want to talk to you about Hearthstone. And that, that got him eventually to calm down come away from his mother, he went into my room, and we, we talked a bit about Hearthstone, how to make a good deck. We spent about half an hour doing that. At first, he was sort of really argumentative and refuting everything I said. You know, I said, you've got Haunted Creeper. Haunted Creeper is a really good two-mana card, and it is a really good two-mana card. And he was like, no, no, it's an awful card, awful. But he actually kind of likes Haunted Creeper. And it was he, we were playing a bit earlier, and he saw how good it was doing. So I'm sure he knew it wasn't actually that bad, but, you know, he's in this angry state, so he's going to disagree with you no matter what you say. But eventually, I managed to work my way round to getting him, A, to agree with me-ish, as much as he would in a state like that, and uh, B, calm him down. So by the time I wanted to leave, which was literally a few minutes later, I, did, I didn't want to leave while he was in that state, so that's why I had to resolve this issue. But uh, a few minutes later, he, um, he, he was calm. After, a few minutes later, after that conversation, he was calm, that's what I meant to say. And the reason that worked, I feel like this tactic could work on adults, because it's, it was very similar to another tactic you, you, yourself, can employ, which is reframing. He saw his emotions to all be about sort of how he was treated by other people, specifically in this case, his mother. However, I reframed the conversation to be about Hearthstone. You know, I, I went in a completely different way than he expected with the conversation start talking about Hearthstone, not just telling him about how bad he was being for yelling at his mum or... No, but don't, don't engage him on his terms. That doesn't persuade people. If you really can't persuade people, you need to sort of engage them on your terms. Change the conversation to be something about that you think is... you know about, you can persuade people about, and they are more interested in, potentially. It's, it's easy to say 
very hard to do in practice, but when you can do it, it works very, very well. Anyway, so I thought that was an interesting thing. You can learn a lot about sort of conversational skills by dealing with the eight-year-old. Uh, so something else I did in the past as well is sort of the throw stuff at a wall until something sticks tactic, which is one of my favourites for conversations and persuading people more specifically. Is you just sort of uh, I can't. I'm trying to remember what it was now. But he was having another argument with his mum, or was it someone else? Maybe I'm not sure. But he was having an argument with someone. And, uh, you know, in the end, I, I, you know, I just sort of asked him, f first of all, about, oh, is this the way you'd like to be treated? Then that didn't really work. He just got a bit annoyed with me. I was like, then, um, so that was appealing to a sense of justice, which kids don't tend to have, but I tried. Uh, then I tried appealing to sort of his sense of selfishness, while well, saying, well, if you treat your mum badly, or whoever it was, they're less likely to give you stuff in future. Uh, that didn't work too well either. And then, in the end... Um, I, I, I can't remember what I did to solve it in the end, but basically I went along those sorts of lines and I just sort of appealed to different values he would have in them, and eventually I found one that worked. And it really calmed him down and it worked. <laughs> and that's something you can do once again with adults, not just eight-year-old children. I think a lot of these things are a lot more visible in eight-year-old children because they're less in control of themselves. So it's easier to witness, and they behave a lot more instinctually. But they work on anyone. So, you know, think about that when you're talking to people next. And that was basically the main highlights of the day when I got back to, to Gloucester. There wasn't much. I just spent a bit of time talking to my mum. Uh, that was pretty much what I was doing for most of the day. Most of the remainder of the day, because by the time we'd had dinner and sort of sorted things out, it was sort of seven o'clock anyway. Um, I don't think we talked about particularly anything interesting. Um, at least not stuff that I'll probably talk about some other time. Uh, and yeah, so I hope that was interesting. I, I think probably to try and... Oh, actually, no, hold on. There was one last thing. One last thing I want to talk about. And that was English cuisine or English food. Our typical foods. You've got the English breakfast, which is things like sausage and uh, beans and bacon and hash browns and egg. Uh, that's one of our traditional foods. Another traditional food, food we have is a roast, which is something like, you know, some sort of meat, like chicken, um, for, or maybe lamb or something like that. Lots of any meat works, uh, you know, with um, broccoli and carrots and maybe peas, mashed potato, gravy, etc. And then our final and most famous, I think, dish is fish and chips, which is, as it sounds, fish and chips. And there's a theme you'll notice among all of these foods, and that is they're all combinations of separate ingredients and they're left fairly separate as well which differs quite a lot from things like pastas or pizzas which you will find in Italy which you know you tend to have a sauce and pasta and it all sort of blends together a pizza is blending together different flavors same with Indian cuisine you know blending together different spices and things like that in many ways similar to Chinese food or Thai food or any Asian food in general really and e even quite different than sort of typical burgers uh, or even like you know fancy sausages you might get in Germany or something like that English cuisine is almost unique in how bland it is we don't attempt to blend the flavors together we just get individual things that we think are nice, or in reality were easy to acquire, such as potatoes, which you need for mashed potato, and chips, or fish were easy for us to acquire because we've got a lot of water around us. But what we did, our cuisine, was just developed from getting individual items and just eating them as is. We, we were sort of we were unique in how uncreative we were in combining these ingredients. And that's something that I realised today, or having a bit of a brunch at around about 11 o'clock with my family. It's sort of a traditional thing we do before anyone leaves the house who's been staying over for a few days is we have a brunch. Which, for those who don't know, is basically a big English breakfast uh, with the sausages and beans, etc, etc. 
and uh, yeah, it's we're called a brunch because it's mixed between breakfast, which begins with a B, and lunch. So that's why I had it. Like usually have it like ten or eleven o'clock, something like that, in between when you'd normally have breakfast and lunch. So yeah, there you go. That was the day. I hope you enjoyed listening to my comments on dealing with eight-year-olds, on English food, and I think that was the main two things I talked about, wasn't there? I feel like there's a third, but it's not coming to me. I usually like to do three things when I can, but hey-ho, your memory, or rather my memory, is far from perfect. Anyway, I shall see you tomorrow. Today has been the 7th of January. 2017, I have been Hammerforce, aka Steven, and once again, I will say this for the third time, I shall see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thanks for watching our videos, I hope you enjoyed them. Please could you do us a favour, and just hit the like button underneath the video, it will improve our search ratings, so we'd really appreciate it. Make sure to check out our channel, see if there's anything else you're interested in, and have a very nice day.